Hello, Neil. Dub, how are you, mate? Good, how are you? Very good, thank you. That's good. Whereabouts are you, mate? Are you still in WA? No, I'm on the Central Coast, New South Wales. Oh, yeah, nice. Nice part of the world to be in. Yeah, yeah. Apparently you're getting a bit of rain over there at the moment. Yeah, it's just coming. Uh, it's just coming today. Okay. So, yeah, we got a few days ahead. Yeah, it's heading this way to Tasmania, apparently, and we're going to get a bit of a dumping tomorrow. That's right. Yeah, I saw that on the news. Yeah. So, uh, thanks for um, agreeing to have a chat to me, and um, welcome to the group. Um, you've had a sighting several years ago in WA, you said. Yeah, it was about, about 15 years ago. Uh <laughs> Uh, I was uh, working on some vineyards down there. Oh, yeah. And uh, in between, I was staying in a place called Manjumup. Yes, familiar with that one. Yep, and um, and I was working, um, it's a vineyard at Pemberton, which is, you know, like 20 minutes away. Yep. And because they've got, you know, lots of forests there and the, those giant trees over there and whatnot. And... Uh, Anyway, this one night, we uh, went to, I think it was the Pemberton RSL or some club there, and um, I went with the mate of mine that I was staying with, and because I, uh, I wasn't drinking much, so I was going to drive home, so I had, I don't know, one beer or something. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, and uh, I think... <laughs> Uh, you know, so that for the credibility of the story. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, mate. There, there is a bit of a tendency for some skeptics to, um, you know, accuse people of being drunk or high or whatever when they see these things. But you won't hear that from me. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the um, and so you know, we were there. It was a darts competition, and anyway, when that finished, I think it, was, it must have been. I think it was around eight o'clock or something. We we didn't stay there very long, but it was dark. And the, the road from you know Mansham up to Pemberton, you know, it's just that that single lane road, and it's you know it's flanked by those giant um, carry trees and Marion Jarrah. And anyway, so I was I'm driving, and um, my mate's there, and he 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 was pretty drunk, and so he was sort of just chilling out he's sort of half asleep and uh, and then you know just we sort of hit there's a bit of a dip and um, right on the edge uh, you know the headlights caught something and it was about the size of a fox and it had the stripes on the back and it had like that t- I could see it had like the tan colour and I was just like fuck that's a bloody that looks just like a thylacine Yep, and so it must have been like it was it was facing the road, and uh, you know it was only just that couple of seconds, but I I definitely saw the tire, you know the the uh, markings on it, and just went that's that's got to be thylacine. Yep, and then that was that was it. It was a really fleeting moment, you know, but I've never forgotten that. Now that that was how how far did you was it still visible when you drove past it sort of thing or did it duck in the bush already? Well, I didn't see it move or anything. Oh, okay. I just like it was it was right on the edge of the it was on the the passenger side. It was, so it was on the on my side of the road. Um, and so we just you know I just saw it. And just went, That's a bloody thyle scene. But that's all. Like we didn't, we just kept going because yeah. I just thought, oh, it won't be there. Yeah, it yeah. Would have just ducked off, you know. It would have been pretty close to the to the car when we drove past. Yeah, okay, because it was just standing there. Yeah, and it would have been like I estimate, uh, you know, probably just under a meter, I reckon. Like it was fox sized. Yeah, but it so wasn't it was fox. You know, like, like a juvenile I'm, one, maybe. Yeah, like I've, you know, I've seen lots of foxes and, and because my job is an illustrator, so, I, you know, it's, I pay attention to detail. Yeah, okay. 
So, um, yeah, I mean, that, and that's, I just remember that, just remember seeing the stripes there. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, and it was, so it was in, you know, it was just right on the edge of the tree line. And you probably only saw it for three or four seconds or something like that? Yeah, yeah, that was it, because it was, because, um, you know, we, it's a bit hard to sort of turn around on that road because of that dip. You know, I didn't want to turn around straight away just in case a car come the other way and collected us because it wouldn't have seen us. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So, uh, so it was yeah. after dark, so it was probably like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, something like that? Uh, it was probably closer to about 8.30. Oh, okay. Did you just have because... early dark competitions? <laughs> but yeah, I know. It was a, like, I think because we, we got knocked out of the dark comp. Oh, okay. And so we just went, oh, we just, you know, and I didn't want to hang around too long, um, you know, until everybody was too drunk and whatnot. Yeah. So even had, even though your mate was half tanked, did he see it at all or he was too busy um, flopping around? Yeah, he didn't see it. Yeah, fair he enough. So. Have you uh, yeah. told many people about it? I've told a few people, but they just, you know, they, it's usually met with silence or, you know. Are you from WA originally? No. Okay. No, no. There's a lot of sightings in that southwest region. It's particularly around Nana and uh, Bustleton as well. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of the, the names uh, slip my mind, but they nearly all end in up because they're all Aboriginal words. So Yeah, that's right. Melanjup. Yeah, yeah. Dellinjup and all of that. So, um, yeah, I'm not surprised it's in that general area. So when you say 15 years ago, you're talking about 2005, 2006, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it would have been around then. Yeah. Do you remember what time of the year it was? Uh, well, I know it was hot because, like, I mean, because we, I was there, we were harvesting grapes. Ah, yeah. So it would have been right time. at the end of summer, or early autumn. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, we'd, cause we'd start work, um, you know, I think we were in the field about 5, 5.30 or something, and then we'd sort of knock off around 2 o'clock because it was just too hot to work. Yeah, yeah, it gets pretty warm over there. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, I'd say it was then, you know, it was... I, I had a bit of a look at your profile before I added you to the group. Are you Aboriginal yourself, mate? Are you Indigenous? Yeah, yeah, my mob's from um, South West Queensland. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, and I've, um, yeah, I mean, I've talked to, to a few other black fellas and they're like, oh, no, you know, yeah, like one of one of my mates and she's from right up the top there and she wanted to take me to, to um, some cave where they've got paintings of thylacines up there. And in Queensland? No, this is, um, oh, it's up in the Kimberley. Oh, okay, up that side of the world, yep. Yeah, yeah. So it's, um, uh, you know, I've spoken to a few other fellas. I think the black fellas down around, you know, the southwest call them swamp dogs. Oh. Uh. <laughs> that's their common nickname for Not an indigenous word, obviously, but that's their kind of slang term when they see them. That's them swamp dogs because they like to hang around the, the wet areas and eat the birds and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I've, I've got friends in Kakadu who've got a, a word for them, and they still name them, so they're still part of the living culture. Yeah, that's right. Same yeah. same as with the Flinders Ranges in South Australia too. And because there's a few stories um, where they, there's stories about dogs, um, but they're talking about thylacines. Yeah, and, and, and I think... Few, yeah, there's a few old Dreamtime stories, and they and there's, uh, there's one I heard of something, and there, was, there were two dogs, and one of them was, um, was black, and I, as I understand it, like, they can come in a few different morphs, can't they? They can, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I think that one was from, um, I don't know whether that was even closer to the centre, closer to Hermansburg or something like that. Yep. That's a, quite an old story, that one. There was a, a story of some kids at the Yundamu school 
in, in the territory and the teacher was talking about Australian animals and brought up the Tassie tiger thylacine and told them that they was, it was extinct and they argued with him. Said, no, no, we know that one, that one's out here. Yeah. And actually Alice Springs, the, the ranges around there, uh, I think it's the McDonald ranges, isn't it, around Alice Springs? Yeah, yeah. There's a Dreamtime story about the thylacine partic- pertinent to those ranges. So, you know, it's it's nowhere near as, um, you know, rare and unknown on the mainland as what they might let you lead you to believe sort of thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, some of it sort of, especially between communities and that, they, they're a bit hush-hush about some of that stuff because, you Well, know, it's their people... culture, mate. They, they tell, tell white fellas about it. They'll just run and make their own money off of it and the people will get nothing out of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's usually the way know, it goes. It's... Yeah, years years ago when um, so I used to be an animator and we were animating Dreamtime stories and we did one um, on the fire was saying from Tassie. Actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, it was years ago. Was that for the ABC or something? Yeah, they're like little five minute cartoons. Oh yeah, I think I might have seen some of them actually. Yeah, um, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Oh, Uncle Jim Everett, that's down there. Okay. He narrated it, did he? Oh, he had some, I think he had something to do with it, um, where there was permission to... Have you seen our doco on our YouTube channel? Yeah, that's how I came across you. Okay. Uh, Regina McKenzie gives a good rundown of it from the uh, Flinders Rangers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Are you are you thinking of the Vice documentary? The th- uh, I think that was the one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you go to Thylacine Awareness Group of Australia, Taz Inc. on YouTube, we've got our own documentary that goes for over an hour. Oh, have you? Yeah, and we interview a lady from the Flinders Ranges by the name of M- Regina McKenzie, and she's from the Adyamutna people. And um, like I said, they still revere the animal because it's still a living part of their culture, so they still say its name and. She gives us a really good rundown of one of the stories about it. There's quite a few, I believe. There's, um, oh, I'll check that one out. There's, uh, yeah, something a bit similar. Because like, I, you know, I get to go around to um, communities there, push and stuff, and um, talk about my work, and, and then you often find out some stories there. And ah, I awesome. did one of them. They did one on this, uh, this little community called Nenmerianga, which is about, it's only got about 300 people, and it's sort of, it's right up the top there. It's about two hours' drive from Darwin. Okay. And, um, they they did, like, the same thing you were saying. They, they, and this is a principle. He was telling us this story. He said, oh, let's, you know, let's concentrate on the animals that live out around Nenmerianga and, um, they go on oh, dingoes and, and um, you know black kites and, and then they said mermaids and he goes no 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 they've got to be real they've got to be real um, animals and they like he said they these kids they wanted to flog me because they they said no we know that the mermaids here and they said they're not like that he was showing them a picture and they said no no they're not like that they're not is that like the that. York not, York what's that is that the York York I, I, I think so. I I'm not too sure on the name, but they said that they they actually they'll they'll um, chase away crocodiles. Yep. In, in the river, and that they they will sort of look after kids. Like they they they, they won't hunt kids or something, but they um, and they resemble a crocodile a little bit. Okay. But, yeah, but they um, and apparently like this my same mate that's. Um, was telling me about the the cave paintings of thylacine. She said, "Yeah, and there's some there with the mermaids." Yeah. yeah. Ah, sorry, I'm getting getting confused. Yeah, no, Mar- she's, Marie yeah, Mankara. She yeah, my little brother. She calls me. She's the she's the one now. She. she oh, is he already working with her? What's that? Are you already working with her? No, well, I've done a few events with her. Oh, and awesome! Yeah, I went to yeah, her book yeah, yeah. launch a couple of years ago. Ah. Oh. <laughs> she invited me up. Yeah, small world. <laughs> yeah, oh, you should do it. Yeah, she's she's lovely. She um, 
Yeah, she's the one. She's the one now. With saying, I come up, or, you know, I got, I can show you stuff up there. And yeah, yeah. We, we, she took me out to, um, what's it? Called? Is it Nullum Boy? No, uh, Manning Greta. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And met some yeah. family out there. We camped out there on the beach, and um, we had a great time. We, she hired a friend with a four wheel drive, and he took us out, and basically was our not our guide, but he was our driver sort of thing, and <laughs> camped with us, and we had a great time. Oh, she's lovely. That's so mad. That's awesome. That's so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, if you speak to her, you'd have to tell her that Dub says hello. I will, mate. I'll make an, she'll, I'll make she'll a she'll special spin out. point of that. Yeah, she's she'll spin out. Yeah, she's uh, like, um, yeah, she's she's so cool. She took us out to lots of places all around them, um, out to Hermansburg and um, all these other places around Alice. We met at a, at the, um, oh, we actually met out at the out at all the room. Okay. And because she used to work out there. That's right. That's one of the ranges. Yeah, yeah. This um, must have been a few years ago. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, and like I think, oh, when did I meet her? Probably about. Um, it's, I, I, I think over, over ten years ago. I think. Okay. It's, yeah, well, uh, she joined the group about oh pretty early on in the piece. She probably joined the group about six years ago. She doesn't really get online anymore. She just can't be bothered dealing with all the bullshit and the drama. But. Um, that's yeah. how I met her, and then she sent me a map of all the cave paintings that she knew of, of Thyla's, and which wow. I've treasured, and haven't revealed to anybody, so that was yeah. just a special little um, treat for me, so I, I could count them up, basically, and have a rough idea where they are, and then we went out and met her cousin Mandy out at Kakadu, and then we went out to um, Man and Greeter and stayed there for about three or four days. It was fantastic. It was a great trip. Wow. Wow. Because she, she's got... She's got connections to Tiwi, to Tiwi Island. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, her daughter was working on um, Melville Island, I think. If it's, yes, it's yeah. Mm. Yeah, she, uh, well, see, because we, we, we're, we're a um, member of this, this uh, First Nation Riders Group. Okay, yep. Um, and, uh, and I think they actually, they've, they're trying to do something in Adelaide um, this year. Trying to have like a, a bit of an event. So, yeah. Yep. So hopefully she'll be there, and I'll be able to catch up with her and have a yarn. Ah, cool. Yeah. Well, she's she's been meaning to come down to Tassie for a while. She wants to come down and experience the winter in Tassie. Coming from oh. Darwin, that'll be a big step. <laughs> 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 ah, awesome. That oh, that's a great connection. I'll let her know that I've um, chatted to you. She'll be wrapped. <laughs> she, she'll laugh. Wow. Yeah, she okay. will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like, your, your doco came up in my feed. Yeah. And um, I was like, oh, uh, and I had, I'd been meaning to watch it, actually. I had it, I had it started and then, um, so, yeah, it's funny. Uh, yeah, they did a good job. It's, it's pretty safe. I mean, it could have been a little bit more controversial and they only used one of the photos we had and we had four pretty distinct photos, so... But, you know, it's all good. Oh, I thought it was very tastefully done. They didn't try and make me look like a turkey or anything, so I was happy. Yeah, I guess, um, yeah, they're probably erring on the side of, like, we don't want... Yeah, nothing too controversial. But, no, nah, I we... thought that was very tastefully done. And, you know, they were in, they embedded themselves in my life for about a week, so it was pretty intense. <laughs> oh, yeah. That sucks. Yeah, you had your family there. It's, um... Yeah, it's in some ways it's it's brave because you know I mean people are just gonna it's they, they won't believe it until they see it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, and I get that skepticism is what it is, um, but we just got so many hundreds, if not thousands, of witnesses that describe very similar things, totally independent of each other, and ninety nine percent of them aren't out looking for thylacines. It just happens, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's right. What what was um. There was there was one about I think he was a clergyman or something, or he had um, he you know he was a pastor at a church or something. Oh, that was in a monastery in WA, and it came in the kitchen. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, that's a cracker, isn't it? Was that in the seventies or something? No, I think it was in the nineteen eighties. It wasn't that long ago. That's right. 
and he had because he's talking about the um, he talked about the, the intelligence of them or that they knew that they they weren't um, you know going to be harmed by them or something and there was a, there was another I don't know whether it was that one or there was another one with um, uh, they described the call and that they I think they had one that was almost like pet on property. It might have been near Victoria, I think. Okay. And they. Um, yeah, that's right. You're talking about the animal animal um, mystery. I think it's called that little series on YouTube. Like, yeah, and they had that they they were what they do that they animal mystery they X. Up, what's that? Animal mystery X. Yeah, I think that's yeah. I think that's the one. And they they they, were, they remarked about how how great its hearing was, and that um, so you know like they had a trail out in the bush or something, and cars would come. But this would and there was it would hang around with the dog sometimes. They had, but it always heard um, cars coming up the the track long before the dogs did. Yeah. Okay. And they. Uh, they always just sort of were like, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they they were better to sort of um, have around because they they got a lurch of any anybody coming and whatnot. So yeah, be um, oh, you know, it'd be great to really. Yeah, see. there's a there's a lot of interesting stories about them out there. That's for sure. Some of them are um, from Tassie, but there's a lot of them from the mainland too. You know. Yeah, that's right. And, they, and like even in um, even in PNG, they, you know, there's some um, stories up there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are talking about PNG at the moment because that um, clown online, Forrest Galante, has been. Um, oh, that's right. Popping out <laughs> stories left, right, and centre. But he, I think, if he spent as much time looking for thylacines as he does brushing his teeth, he'd probably achieve something. You know. <laughs> He, he's, his production company tried to dud us for about four of our videos and they wanted to use them for a hundred bucks about four years ago and I told them to bugger off. Really? And, Jeez. And then um, they kept pestering me and I, I got quite blunt with them in the end and then about three months later they came back and offered us two grand to use two of our videos and then I, I told them in no uncertain terms to um, get far away basically because I'd yeah, had enough yeah. of their bullshit. Um, so... Yeah. Yeah, it was it was pretty poor form, um, and then he comes out kicking the crap out of me because of my photos back in March. Sour grapes, I think. Yeah, that sounds a bit right. Yeah, I've got all the emails to prove it, but you know, I, I don't really get off on belittling people. But you know, he's trying to, you know, they made a video about how fat I am and and um, you know we're really a hate group and all this sort of crap. He's just so desperate to get his mug on the bloody screen. It's pathetic. Oh, that sounds that's a bit narcissistic. Yeah, it is. But his his show got cancelled, see? So Oh well, there you go. It was endangered and now it's extinct, so <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I don't want to give him too much airplay. Look mate, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'll I'll definitely have a chat to Marie and uh, mention your name. Do a bit of name dropping. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yes. if, you, if you do get any other bits and pieces out of some of the communities and they're happy to share their stories, by all means, get back in touch. Absolutely, I will. I will. Thanks, um, thanks, Neil. No, that was awesome. Great talking to you. Okay, same. All okay. the best, mate. Yep, see ya. Ta-da.